I'm Sean O'Donoghue with Right Foot Down. It's a uh, pretty chilly, blustery day here in uh, the Washington DC metro area. But today we have a surprise for you. Something we've been waiting for for a while. The 2016 Mazda MX-5 Miata. Not necessarily the ideal weather for a road test, but a lot of people boast this to be the car of four seasons. So hey, why not? The MX-5 Miata actually has a very spacious trunk. The main reason is because there's no spare tire. Uh, you do have an inflator pump and you do have spare tire, well, tire tools, but no spare. Because of this though, you can put any number of things inside the trunk. Things such as a Technodrome, an Xbox One, and a race helmet with room to spare. So there's not many faults with the new Miata interior. In my opinion though, there's a couple things that aren't quite the way they should be or could be improved upon. First, the cup holders. Uh, you can place one down here, which by the way, they are removable. You can place them down here in front of the passenger, which would make things awkward for the passenger. Or you can place them both up here at the base, back side of the console. Uh, the issue with back here though, is if you have like longer arms and you want to shift, your elbow might bump into them. Also, trying to use the uh, the command buttons, uh, your elbow definitely is going to hit them or whatever drink happens to be in them. Uh, the only other minor thing I can think of though is, well besides there not being a glove box, is the, uh, the command setting for day and night, even though it says it's automatic, it isn't you have to tell it because it'll be staring you right in the face at night or if you have it in night mode during the day, you're not gonna be able to see it. Other than that, perfect. This car has 155 horsepower, rel relatively same amount of torque. Uh, you know, you might think, oh, 155, that's not very much. Well, in this car, it's, it's really adequate. If anything, it's a little bit more than adequate. You know, the thing only weighs like 2,300, 2,400, you know, depending on how you option it out, this one being a Touring, uh, probably closer to 2,500 pounds, but still, that's really not that heavy. That's a pretty light car. I mean, you open up the door and it's so light that it swings almost out of your hand. The hood's aluminum, the trunk's aluminum. The car was engineered with lightness in mind, so you get good performance, good gas mileage, and really good handling. You know, back to that 155 horsepower, the car's really not a slouch. I mean, you downshift it a couple times, and it, it's pretty decent at getting out of its own way. It's really not that slow of a car. I mean, it's not the fastest thing, but it's good enough for some fun. I thought I'd turn that shit off. That's right, I turned it on so I could demonstrate how annoying that shit is. You know what else is annoying? Is this stupid little yellow and red thing on the navigation that tells me when I'm speeding. I mean, who really sticks to the speed limit anymore? Uh, not very many people. So, I don't know, just kind of an annoyance. I'll be honest, this is actually the first time I've driven a Mazda Miata. I know, I know. You know, it's it's one of those kind of rites of passage, I think, that I guess, you know, most enthusiasts should have is they should have an experience where they drive a Roadster when it's, uh, you know, 30, 40 degrees outside with the top down and wearing a hat and sunglasses. 
today I get to check that mark. One thing I wanted to mention was because this is the first time, because this is the first time that I've driven a Miata, I wasn't really sure what to expect. You know, I didn't really notice at the bar high or low, just, you know, just that it would be a fun car. Sure enough, it is lots of fun. You know, at home, I have a 2013 Scion FRS. You know, I won't bore you with all the comparisons that everybody else has done, but I will definitely say that the FRS is more firm around corners. It's, it's a little bit more, what is it, hard-edged, I guess you could say. With, as with this car, you have a little bit more body roll. The user inputs are a little bit more soft, but it is still a very, very fun car to drive. And to do so, more nanny state electronics. One of the things I don't like about the new Miata is that for an enthusiast car, there sure are a lot of kind of nanny state things. Uh, lane departure warning, very sensitive. If you like doing the whole kind of, uh, you know, cutting corners close to the apex uh, kind of thing, it will, there you go, every single time. So you can have it turned off, but then you have this orange light staring at you on the dashboard. So it's, it's a question of which one's more annoying to you. The engine is very eager. The transmission, the, uh, the gears are a little short. Uh, so you get this great sensation of speed without necessarily having to go fast. And it makes it more fun. This MX-5 has 155 horsepower and to some, you know, you might be kind of like, oh, it's not very much. But to be honest, the car is like super light. We're talking like 2,400, 2,500 pounds. So the, you know, the, the quote unquote lack of horsepower doesn't really, it's not that big of a deal. The brakes in this car are very good. Uh, I would say they are better than the, uh, ooh, lots of potholes, which is why it's good to have good brakes. Anyways, the uh, the brakes are very good. They don't feel kind of, they're set in wood like the, the brakes on my uh, Scion FRS. Uh, um, obviously, they're not the best brakes, but considering this is, you know, a, a Miata, they're excellent. You don't really need anything better than than the way they are right now. Yes, 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 another awesome corner. Woo! Yeah! This car has a Bose nine speaker uh, navigation stereo system. It is excellent. I have not been in very many cars that have a better sound system than the one that's more potholes that are installed in this. The uh, really, really cool thing is there are speakers, which, you know, Miatas are known for having speakers in their headrest, right? Behind your head. And you get this full kind of 360 uh, projection of sound. Even though it's a Bose, you have the highs and the lows. It's an all around excellent stereo system. The suspension on this car is excellent. I was mentioning earlier that it'll tend to sway a little bit more in corners than, than my uh, FRS, but on the same hand, it's very good about absorbing bumps in the road. You can have the top down or up, and it feels like you're driving a coupe. There's very, very minimal uh, body shimmy that's usually associated with uh, convertibles or cars with removable tops. It's not a very stiff suspension, well, obviously from a roll standpoint, but from, uh, you know, like a sports car standpoint. But it's not really soft either. It's kind of hard to describe. It's really in the middle. All right, let's go.
pretty good acceleration. I'm actually not as cold as I thought it would be driving right now. The, uh, the circulation in the car is actually not as strong as you think it would be. Plus, the, uh, the seat heaters are very good. You can have three levels of settings. The, the highest level you really don't need because, well, it's going to scorch your butt. I never thought that driving a car in, what is it, it's 40 something degrees and I would be enjoying it as much as I do. But yeah, it's a great experience. And you know, aside from the weird looks you get from other people, uh, it's not much different from having the, uh, the top down on a, uh, on a more, uh, on a hotter day. Damn, what an awesome little car. I don't want to have to give the keys back. I totally get why this car is such a following now. Forget the numbers, forget the figures. This car is all about the driving experience.